I'm taking on the Minecraft challenge known as the Tree Spirit Challenge. If you've been around the block, you've most likely heard of this challenge. For anyone who hasn't, here's the basic summary of the rules. Number one, you must pick a tree at the start of the game and break all of the logs with the exception of the bottom log. This becomes your heart log. If your heart log is destroyed or broken, it's game over. Rule number two, this heart log is also the beginning of what's known as your heart tree. You can only extend your heart tree by using the logs gained from this first tree you've harvested and saplings gained to grow other trees whose logs are descendants of your original tree. Tree. Rule number three, you cannot extend the heart tree with planks, slabs or anything else other than logs, although a lot of players do allow the use of leaves of the descendant trees too. Rule number four, you must stay connected to the heart tree at all times. A small allowance of being able to stand on a block directly adjacent to any heart tree log is widely accepted. However, any distance further than this is not allowed. Though I personally allow myself to go a few blocks away from the heart tree to pick up any dropped blocks that may have fallen slightly out of my reach, as long as I return straight away to my heart tree. Rule number five, while you can't break the heart log, you can break other logs connected to your heart tree. But you need to make sure that if you do break a log that is part of your heart tree, you're still connected to the heart tree when you do so. Rule number six, logs are connected to each other by placing them directly adjacent to one another. I allow for diagonal but some people don't and I get that and those are the basic rules out of the way if you want a more in-depth look at the rules and nuances of this challenge I'll have a link to a video in the description also I'm playing this on hardcore which makes an already difficult challenge more difficult let's go all right here we are day one of the world my spawn makes things super convenient as I was wanting to use spruce trees for this challenge they're an excellent tree of choice because of the amount of logs you get in return once you start planting the giant variant of the spruce trees there was wasn't much that went into choosing my first tree, I just sort of picked one at random, mostly though I did want one near the edge of the water where the tree line was a little thin. Why was that important? Because I'm not going to be able to sleep for a while, because I don't have access to sheep's wool, meaning I'm going to have to survive through the night. My strat for this will be to hide underground as far as my heart tree can extend at this point of the game, while mobs take control of the overworld. When the next day comes though, they're burned to death in the scorching heat of the sun's rays while I laugh. However, there will be no laughing if said mobs can hide under dense forest, especially a skeleton. At this stage of the game, those things are run killers. So I chop down every log apart from the bottom log of my tree, my heart tree, that's my heart log. Then I use the logs gained from the first tree to grow my heart tree over to another rival tree, chop that down. Now, I can't use these newer logs to extend the heart tree, but I can still use them to craft items and the like, which is what I do. Make a crafting table and a wooden pick so I can mine for stone. Then I made a furnace so I could cook the logs from the rival tree down into to charcoal and then replanted the saplings game from my tree of choice you know my actual tree I had five of them I only planted three of them because I only had enough space for the three I can't get far at the moment you know with being tied to my heart tree the logs I cooked were now opened up as passage to torches. I placed them on the surface to hopefully ward off mobs come night time and seeing as I'm going to be spending night time underground in my hidey hole, having some light down there would make things a little less miserable. I also gathered enough stone to add more stone tools to my arsenal of basic gear, a pickaxe, axe and shovel. I would have made a sword too but I'd run out of sticks. And if by magic one of my saplings exploded into a full maturity. I mean if trees grew this fast in real life I don't know if it would be a good thing or a bad thing. I used the logs to move over to another rival tree and destroy it. The logs also went into my furnace for additional charcoal. Now come night time, like I said before, I did what any good challenger of the tree spirit challenge does, hide underground until it passed. I think if I remember rightly I was watching some of the uh, Witcher season 2 while I waited for sunrise. The next day I started work early. I had trees to harvest and fortunately it looked like my torches had done the trick keeping mobs at bay. With my new logs I needed to start expanding the heart tree out so I could plant more trees trees. In hindsight, it probably would have been wiser to go further into the forest so that I could harvest as many of the rival trees for the logs as possible, which would have been used for smelting or crafting purposes, but I didn't. Instead, I went onto the river and used dirt blocks at regular intervals for planting saplings onto. Then I waited for them to grow, harvested them once they grew, extended the tree farm, and repeated until I decided it was time to get the giant spruce variants. They are game changers. Now, at this stage of the game, I passed the point of logs ever being an issue again. I know it's probably been an extremely short amount of time for you guys watching but it took a while when I was playing and now I have enough saplings to grow multiple large spruce variants and as a result have access to an unlimited number of spruce logs in theory. I mean I still have to put in the work to collect the logs and that takes time but in theory I 
I do have access to an unlimited supply. And what does someone want with an unlimited supply of logs? To go exploring, to find life out in the wilderness other than mobs. I'm talking villagers. But of course I didn't actually know what direction villagers would be in. So, you know, I'm a man of a very limited view of the world. All I've been able to see is trees, rivers and ice. So using my heart tree logs, I tower up high, crank the render distance up and look around. Let's see what's around. Uh, okay, before I actually look at fire, I can actually see an azalea tree down there, so I guess that means the lush cave is down there somewhere. I would go and explore, but I'm not that fussed about exploring it at the moment. I want to find a village. A nice village, maybe? Anything? Just civilization of some sort? No? There might be... A spruce village, maybe. There's nothing, is there? See, there's a plains biome over there. Maybe I should go over that way. That might be my best bet. I couldn't see a village, but I could see a plains biome. One of the few yeah, biomes to potentially one. have one. So I went on my merry way, a log at a time, in that direction, with the hopes of finding civilization. And the journey was slow going. I mean, I didn't know exploration was going to be this slow, but it, it, it was... Seriously, there's a couple of times I've wondered to myself why I'm doing this challenge, and this was one of those times. A plus of the journey is that I came across sheep, so I guess I'll be able to sleep when it gets dark. No yes. more standing around in my hidey-ho waiting for it to get light. A bit further on and I figure it's a good time to tower up again and to my elated surprise I actually found a village. That looks villagey to me. That definitely looks like a village. I found something. That's a village. There it is. You can see the smoke of their campfire. Either that or it's a house fire. And that makes no difference to me what it is. But I wouldn't get there until dark, and in my current feeble state, I wouldn't last long. Not without some sort of anime training arc under my belt, so I quickly walked back to my ho hidey ho and waited for sunlight, despite having just gathered wool to be able to make beds. That, that was... I don't know why I did this. <laughs> it, I just don't. But it didn't take too long, and again, another plus, I managed to watch some more of The Witcher Season 2, so I, I was kind of happy. To my surprise, I had enough logs left on me to make it to the village. It was raining, which was a bit of a downfall, on the thing it was you know it made me paranoid that a creeper was going to sneak attack me under the cover of raindrops but i did make it to the village and when i did the first thing i did was introduce myself to one of the locals Whoa. and he didn't seem oh, impressed sad. and even if he had have been this is i wouldn't have cared he's nothing you. more than an asset to me sorry okay. i mean okay. it is nothing I, more I than an asset to me that's right to i don't me, see them as people i see them for what okay, they are we, we hence didn't. why i'm towering up to see what sort of village i'm working with as long as there are two assets one wandering around, I'm happy. And from the looks of things, it's a medium-sized village, so that shouldn't be a problem. And again, rather than make my own bed, I extended the heart tree into one of the villager houses and slept in one of their beds. That was a power move right there. Originally, I'd intended to take over the village and make it safe through renovations, but being realistic, that's not going to happen. The village is a mess. The terrain is all over the place. There's a cave system. There's a couple of villager houses inside the cave system. Yeah, as soon as I saw it, I thought, no chance. There is, however, a nice little island in the middle of a nearby lake that looks perfect to set up shop. I'll bring the villagers to me. Sorry, I'll bring the assets to me. But it was going to take a lot of work for the island to become habitable. First things first, set up my tree farm. The logs on me aren't going to last forever. I need some sort of way of replenishing stock because I'm going to need a lot. The island can only become habitable for me once I'm able to walk anywhere on it and still be connected to the heart tree. To do that, I had to run lines of heart tree logs across the entire island, which yes, took longer than you think because I had to replenish the logs when I ran out. The lines of logs are all connected to my heart log back where I started on day one but are spaced apart by two blocks from one another. This is fine, I'm not breaking any rules because I'm allowed to stand on any directly adjacent block next to the heart tree log if you remember from the rules. And seeing as all the blocks in between the lines of logs are directly adjacent to a heart tree log, or they will be at least once I flatten the ground, I'll be able to stand on any one of them. And that's exactly what I did. I flattened the ground anywhere it needed flattening, replaced all of the dirt blocks in between the lines of logs with spruce planks, took out all of the trees in the way, none of which could be used for growing the heart tree, and in fact were put into their own chest for smoking down into charcoal, and after all of that, the island was finished. And let me tell you, the sooner I get enchanted diamond tools, the better, especially an axe. I really have grown to despise stone axes and stone tools in general since beginning this challenge. And this is where the villagers come back into the fray. The island was for building a trading hall where I'd be able to get all of my major resource issues solved, mainly for enchanted diamond 
diamond gear and I split the trade hall into two separate buildings mostly because I thought it was a more efficient layout than having one giant building with a lot of empty space in the centre. I don't really know if that's the case, there's simple designs, square boxes and gaps in the walls for villagers to stand next to their job sites so I'll be able to walk around the building window shopping for what I want. Really nothing revolutionary. But to get it all started I was going to need a couple of volunteers so I went off one log at a time trying to find someone interested in making a difference. I found a couple of willing participants, took them back to the trade centre and could see the happiness oozing out of their being. With one of them looking out of the window at his old life and, and the other staring at the corner of the wall. <laughs> Yeah, cheer up guys. Then I went back into the village looting houses in search of beds for the trade hall. I'm going to need more than two villagers to make the trade hall work, so the beds are an important step in the breeding process. As long as I have more beds than I have villagers, they will be willing to increase their population. And I don't have to worry about remaining villagers abandoned in this village after I take all of the beds, because with the two I have, I'll be able to get infinitely more so, what jobs was I going to give the first two villagers of the trade hall? A farmer and a Fletcher. Probably the best two choices I could make. With this being the tree spirit challenge, it should come as no surprise that I have access to a lot of sticks. And for whatever peculiar reason, Fletchers find them a valuable commodity worth spending money for. The farmer is going to be the source of food for the villagers. Not himself, you know, that would be cannibalism and I'm not promoting that, but for the food he will be able to sell to us. You see, one of the farmer options allows allows you to buy bread and give the villagers enough bread and they will breed like rabbits. That's a little secret right there. Incredibly easy. Not so easy, however, is controlling the children they give birth to. These little monsters have a mind of their own and can fit through the one by one caps I have all across the walls of the trade hall. Of course, I could just block them in, but I didn't like that option. So I built a fence around the perimeter of the converted island, so escape wasn't an option. And even if I did do that, even if I did block all the holes in, they'd still be able to get out because when I have each of the villagers standing next to their job sites in their wall, they'd be able to slip out anyway. Now, by this point, I'd been making do with the tree farm I'd set up when I first came to the village, and it had done me well, I'll be honest. But with better tools on the horizon, I'm going to be harvesting trees at a quicker rate. With stone tools, I'm able to harvest the trees one by one and replant as I go, and once I've got to the last tree, the first one has grown again. However, when we do get better tools, I'll be done before the first tree has a chance to regrow. So when that happens, I will just have to hang around waiting for trees to grow yeah, and that's kind of boring. The obvious solution then is well to plant more trees to get a bigger tree farm hence what I'm doing. Once the tree farm was sorted it was time to make another villager a shepherd. I'd killed a cat when searching the village and gotten a couple of string from the look look all right I killed a cat yeah, don't look at me like that. I'm more of a dog guy anyway, you know, but yeah, the cats, they, they're they respawned, the villagers will spawn more of them in, what, what's the issue? All right, there's, there's nothing, all right, so stop. Anyway, I was able to use that string from the, the corpse of the cat to, uh, to make a loom for the shepherd. This guy, like the farmer, is going to be an important part of increasing the villager population, seeing as he will sell beds once he hits a certain level. And it doesn't matter how many trees I grow, if I only have one Fletcher, the amount of emeralds I can get a day is 32. Maybe more if he resets his trades more than once, but it's why I'm placing and breaking gravel blocks to try and acquire flint for more fletching tables. Oh, and a quick tangent away from the village, uh, that fox right there has got to be the most persistent fox in the world. He's been swimming around after salmon for literal real life hours. He is the most persistent fox I've ever seen. And another tangent, our first iron golem spawned in the world thanks to our villager friends. Hey, it might not be humane but these are going to become my source of iron. Oh, come on, you can't have a problem with that. First cats, now the iron gone. Oh, shit. <sighs> whatever. Next was to create a sugarcane farm. Because I have to stay connected to the heart tree at all times, I had to put a layer of logs under the water first before I put the dirt blocks on top, so that I'm only one block away from the heart tree wherever I am on the sugarcane farm, meaning I'm always connected. While the sugarcane grew, I wanted to invest in some toolsmiths. They were one of the biggest reasons for making the tr trade hall in the first place. Diamond tools. That's what they will get me. I've been doing trading with the Fletchers over time and have built up over one and a half stacks of emeralds. Ooh, I thought it would be enough to get one of the toolsmiths to master level. Oh, how naive I was. Alongside the iron I'd been collecting from iron golems, the one and a half stacks of emeralds got him as far as journeyman, two away from master level. On the plus, I now have access to better axes, efficiency two iron axes, and... Uh, 
You know, despite them not being diamond, my mouth was watering when I saw these. And despite being sick to death of tree harvesting, I actually had a renewed vigour because of those brand new axes, so I went chopping trees. It might not look fast, but I assure you, compared to a stone axe, I'm practically moving at the speed of light. Even the rain couldn't dampen my spirits. That was a pun. You can appreciate it by subscribing. If you didn't appreciate it, let me know by liking the video. If anyone's wondering how many logs I get from harvesting all of the 13 of the 14 trees in the farm, this is how many stacks. I roughly get per tree harvest. Pretty good, don't you think? I said 13 of the 14 trees because there's one tree that has refused to grow since I first planted it. Don't know why, but I've grown to accept it by this point. My next trading session with the toolsmith got him to expert level. I now had access to diamond shovels with silk touch, mm, not so great, unbreaking two, pretty good, and efficiency too, also pretty good. All in all, a massive upgrade from what I've used up until now. One more level and he's master level, and hopefully gets me a diamond axe. Now, for my next project, I'm gonna do something a little different. I don't necessarily need this, I just think it's gonna be useful. I'm going to be building an observation tower somewhere I can go to get a clear view of the surrounding land. As for where I'm going to put it, there's a small mountain slash large hill nearby I thought would be perfect. I had to get up there first, and to do that I needed to extend the heart tree up over a perilous drop and towards the top of the small mountain. This was to become the main footpath leading from the trade hall to the tower, so I wanted to make sure it was safe and convenient to use. Currently, I have no armour, like none whatsoever. If I fell from this path, I'd be dead at this height, and also I'd be away from the heart tree, so I need to move quickly to get back. So I widened it, installed staircase blocks, put fences along its entirety, and that was the path finished. Check it out. I'm actually really pleased with how it turned out. I know it's only a footpath, but as far as footpaths go, it's it's nice. Now, I don't know if I can say the same for the observation tower. I had no interest in making it look ornamental, impressive, or decorative. Practicality was all I had in mind, and so all it consisted of was a single block wide column stretching high into the sky, and a flat platform slapped on top with fences around the outside to prevent accidental falls. And that was that. But it served its purpose, and I want you to know that's all I cared about. After cranking up render distance, I could see everything. I was like the Eye of Sauron. Everything within a 30 two chunk render distance was seen to me. I could see a ruined portal, the ocean, the roots of the heart tree connecting from the area I'm in all the way back to where my heart trot heart log is, and then all of the rival trees spread across the land, like literally everything, I could see it. Now, while I was building the tower and footpath leading to the tower, I was also gaining quite a bit of wealth via the Fletchers, like a lot more, and it led me to get an additional better gear to match the diamond shovel. I got the toolsmith to master level where I could get an unbreaking one diamond pick, not an axe but still something. I also got an armour inside the trade hall and traded him all the way up to master level where I purchased fire protection diamond leggings, protection two diamond boots, a fire protection diamond helmet and protection two diamond chest plate. And just like that I went from no armour to a complete full set of diamond armour. Oh and if you think the trading was done, think again. I had a second tool Smith inside the trade hall I hadn't yet traded with. There was one item I was wanting to get my grubby little hands on, you've already heard me say it, a diamond axe, and not long after a beginning trading, I got one, with efficiency one. Not the best, not the worst, but it's diamond. Also, check out how many villagers are inside the trade centre now from our original two at the start. We are cooking now, guys. And even though I'd been doing a lot of tree farming, my enthusiasm was sparked once more by the purchase of the diamond axes. So while I felt this rare enthusiasm for one of the most mind-numbing jobs in Minecraft, I thought I might as well do as much tree farming as I could, right? To celebrate, I was going to turn a load of the logs into sticks and trade them away for money, but I have got a problem. They seem to have formed a union and got on strike for worker rights because none of them were willing to trade. I don't know why. I'm hardly the Jeff Bezos of employers. <sighs> I, I don't know. I purchased some of their other trade options in the hope they'd reset their stick trade. Oh, so what's going on? Well, if I can't trade logs away for money, I can at least smelt them down into charcoal via an auto smelting setup I built for smelting mass items, including logs, seeing as I need a load more charcoal for torches and fuel. It's also a good way to get rid of the iron tools and armor bought from the villagers I don't have need for, smelting them down into iron. You don't get much for them, but it's better than nothing. A few days later and the Fletchers still aren't trading with me. At first I thought this was a big deal, that I was going to have to dispose of them, if you know what I mean, and then deal with angered iron golems. And then I thought, hang on, I have the space, why don't I just get a load more Fletchers and ignore these ones? 
So that's what I did. I got another 12 Fletchers, all of them with the stick trade, and I, yeah, life went on. I also got a weapon smith to get the last of my diamond gear, a diamond sword. This one had unbreaking too. Now, I've been preparing for librarians for some time. That has taken some time. Uh, <laughs> we've done it. I've done it. I've actually prepared for librarians. We've got a ton of lecterns, a stack of lecterns, we've got more than a stack of books. We've got a ton of emeralds that we have done a massive amount of trading with Fletchers. Yes, we are going to be able to take our playthrough to the next level now. I needed lots of lecterns for turning villagers into librarians and books and emeralds for trading with them to lock them into their trades when I come across good ones. And of course, when villagers became librarians, it would have been a mess to find what librarian was assigned to what lectern. So I made the big brain play of being patient and waiting until about halfway through the day when they go and stand by their specific job site block. And from there, I trap them all in. Then I could go through them one by one to see what librarians I did and didn't want, and what trades would have to be re-rolled. I didn't fill all the spaces in the end, but I got a lot of decent enchantments I'm more than happy with. Feather Fallen 3, Fortune 2, Protection 4, Channeling, Frostwalker 2, Riptide 2, Fire Aspect 2, Efficiency 4, Knockback 2, Loyalty 2, Aqua Affinity, Sweeping Edge 2, Fire Protection 2, Looting 2, Silk Touch, Punch 2, Depth Strider 3, Mending, Infinity, Quick Charge 1, Respiration 2, Impaling 2, Blast Protection 3, and Efficiency 3. I would have liked Smite and Flame, but I didn't get them in the rows or the re-rows or the re-re-rows and so forth. I'll try for them at a later date, but for now this is more than enough. And I think that is where I'm going to end it. I did good. From our small tree at the start, we've managed to branch out into something amazing. And after an absolutely insane amount of work, we've set ourselves up for the next stage of the challenge. I hope you can join me for that next episode. I will see you there. Alright, bye.